me give you a quote from a rather interesting book I read a while back. It says, Alvin van der Grein tells of an experiment done by a church in Phoenix, Arizona in America. Intercessors randomly selected 160 names from the local telephone book and divided the names into two equal groups. And for 90 days, they prayed for one group of 80 homes. The other group of 80 homes, they did not pray for at all. After 90 days, they called all 160 homes, identified themselves and their church, and asked for permission to stop by and pray for the family and for any needs they might be willing to share. Look at what happened. Of the 80 homes for which they didn't pray, only one invited them to come in. Of the 80 homes that they had prayed for three months, 69 says, come over, and of them, 45 said, come in, we've got an issue that we'd like some help with. Isn't that significant? Well, there are conditions for successful prayer. Here's two versions of the same scripture in James 4, 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, double-minded ones. See, God wants us to be straight and honest with him and with each other, of course. So most of us have heard of prayer by act. And I heard preaching on this 30, 40 years ago. What does that look like? Well, this is what it stands for. A for adoration, where we honor and worship God. C for confession, when we agree with God. Thanksgiving is gratitude to God. And supplication is our petition or our needs, uh, either for ourselves or for others. Uh, let me give you some examples of scripture with these. Psalm 50, 23, whoever offers praise glorifies me. To him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. Used to be a chorus that we sang back in the 70s. There's another one. Therefore by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to our name, because we're mindful of what God has done for us and doing. What about confession? Well, Jeremiah 14 says, We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness, the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against you. See, like I said before, confession is just agreeing with what God says. That's important to us. And 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here's another one. Proverbs 28, he who covers his sins shall not be blessed, but whoever confesses and leaves them shall have mercy. Leaves them in this context means to turn away from them. Thanksgiving, Philippians 4, 6, I'm sure you all know it. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Here's another one, 1 Chronicles 6, 4, 16, 4. And he appointed some of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord to commemorate, to thank, and to praise the Lord God of Israel. It's interesting. I have a friend, he's in business, and he has one day a week where he made a decision before God that he would not ask for anything, barring emergencies. There would be no requests. One day a week, I think it was normally a Monday, if I remember rightly, and he would simply... Um, say that is his day for thanking God for his goodness. That's an impressive thing to do. And lastly is supplication. Uh, Acts 1.14, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brothers. So there's a crowd gathered together to, to raise issues with God. Ephesians 6.18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, capital S, Holy Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. In other words, all the needs that you become aware of, you can lift them as issues that you bring to God's attention. So when you join this session on prayer with the session on proclamation, you will have a balanced prayer life. <music>